Hello everyone, good evening. This is Chance, how are you doing? I am coming to you live from, of course, on my couch this evening upstairs because this week I'm try I tried my best, I'm, I'm not feeling too well. And so I've been trying to recover uh, all week long, especially since I have a busy weekend. But nonetheless, hey, we gotta be on here for our weekly webinar, so you can expect me to be here. But do know that uh, my voice may not be the best, but nonetheless, we're going to go on with our training for this evening. I'm normally in my office, uh, which is actually right through this door, but um, pretty much all day I've been pretty much trying to work from right here. But you guys are in for a wonderful treat this evening. Let me just make sure that um, everyone is good to go and you can see me or hear me. All right, we have Lionel, we have uh, Gabriel. Uh, I have one quick announcement too, by the way. Uh, we're going to be trying to, uh, uh, we mentioned this, by the way, a few times. If you are a member of our community, Strategic Secrets University, Monetize the Skills Academy, you have the option of being able to, of course, have your products um, done with us, your books, your courses, um, you know, and us promoting you or bringing you on here to teach something. So we're going to be working on with one of our folks pretty soon. I think we mentioned this before, Dr. Cooper. Um, I sent a message this week. So we're going to be trying to, by Sunday, hopefully you should see one of our courses up online uh, at Strategic Secrets University. So we are, we are going to expand our, um, our catalog. So we want you to be a part of that instructor. So that's one of the things I'm teaching you. So hopefully we can get your knowledge, your message out there. And, you know, together we are able to put more courses into Strategic Secrets University where I'm just not the only teacher, but I'm willing to host um, your stuff. Make sure you have good stuff too. Um, Sindel, for those who do not know, Sindel is actually publishing her book. We are publishing her book right now with her. And so that should be coming out pretty soon. Um, actually, it should have been out um, in April the 20th, but she we delayed the launch for a little bit. So stay tuned for more news on when that is going to be. Uh, what else? Michael Apia, um, I spoke with him not too long ago. So he's doing good. Of course, his book is out. So please make sure you support him. If you haven't got his book yet on leadership, go to Amazon.com. And um, I need to get him to put it on our website as well. But go to Amazon.com and check out Michael Apia, A-P-P-I-A-H. Michael Hiller as well, H-I-L-L-E-R, um, has his book out as well. And so that's, uh, you know, those are some things. So we are making progress here. We're really trying to get people to take their skills, monetize it into products, programs, services, and to be able to serve their community in whichever way. So I see some other folks are coming on. Again, this is not normally where we do our training, but I've been, I'm not been too well this past week. And so I'm trying to recoup on that so right now. So I got pretty much 24 hours to get well because this weekend I'm normally busy on the weekends trying to do stuff. So we're going to start in just a moment. Let me do one quick last check here. Uh, Laquisha, welcome. How are you doing? Um, so Lionel, we say, is on here. Carol, welcome. Good to see you on here as well. Okay, so I hope you are ready for tonight's presentation. As some of you have seen, if you have not yet signed up for the um, these trainings, try to do that every Thursday, okay? If I don't send you um, uh, an email notice, you know, it should be on your ca uh, calendar. But what I want you to do is there's an option normally when you sign up for the weekly webinars, there is a feature where you can click, I think, somewhere on the bottom. It's normally on the bottom, uh, left or right, and it says uh, subscribe to future um, webinars. So that way you don't have to be, you know, registering over and over again. Okay, so uh, again, you're gonna probably hear some noise. I mean, it's uh, the weather's been good. It's kind of getting better outside, so it's still sunlight out. Normally, it's dark by this time, so you know you might hear kids outside. And actually, like I said, I'm 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 in private. I mean, public territory here, so my son, my wife might come in. So if you do hear them in the background, just give us a little excuse for this week, okay? Alrighty, I think we are ready. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Let's check here. Let me know if you can see me and if you can hear me. And we're going to begin for this evening. All right, I think we're good to go. All righty, so I have a, a slideshow that I'm going to go through to teach you tonight again how to market 
like Marvel Cinematic Universe. Why are we talking about this? Because of course, you know, you if you have a message, if you're in business, you're in ministry, you have a practice, uh, you want to write books, you want to speak, uh, if you have a message, nonprofit, anything along those lines that you are helping people to better their life, doing something, or you want to get your stuff out there to the world, it requires people to know about it. And that's the most difficult challenge that we have. Um, so many people want to write books, they want to do all these things, but then they don't get any traction because we know that marketing is crucial. And for this whole entire month, that's what we've been focusing on. We've done three presentations now on sniper marketing. And so this is the last presentation for this month as we close out on this particular topic. And then we go into another one on, uh, <clears throat> on next month in April. But marketing is crucial and so i felt that this would be a good topic to finish it off where we talk about because you know movies movies are one of the best examples of how stuff go viral and how they're also able to get a lot of people to be able to see their thing and more importantly i want to capitalize on the fact that marvel cinematic universe does that the best more than everyone else, because they have done over 20-something movies, all of which have been blockbuster sellers. And we're going to talk about one in particular that, you know, and many of them have done over, you know, a billion dollars. Can you imagine a movie in this day and age, 2019 and beyond, and 2018, 2017, doing billions of dollars? This is crazy. So you know they have to have some serious marketing going into this stuff to be able to make that. I want you to understand that you can take the same approach, or apply it to your particular um, situation, and get similar results. Okay, uh, you might not be uh, on the level of the Avengers and you know and so forth and Iron Man movies, but nonetheless, if you see what they're doing, because I've broken it down and I've actually written a chapter in this book here. If you don't have it, make sure you get it. You can get it at strategicsecrets.com. But on page 145, right, chapter 32 right here, so I've written 10 things which I'm going to cover actually tonight in the training so you can go through this and be able, again, to get your stuff out to the masses. So let's bring it on. Um, here's the slideshow. Let's go here one second. Alrighty, I think you guys should be able to see that. Welcome to the webinar. So what are we going to learn about tonight? Tonight we're going to learn how to use sniper marketing secrets like the top celebrities on Marvel Cinematic Universe or MCU to promote your own products, program, and services. All right, to be able to get your stuff out there to the world, how can we be strategic, just like we see Marvel is doing, and. It might sound simple, but again, simplicity is not always practice, and they say what's common is not always common practice also. So simplicity, again, keep it simple. Kiss it. Keep it. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple. Right? We don't say stupid, but we say keep it simple. Nonetheless, I want you to know that this is the stuff that people need to study. You have to study what other people are doing, study what the industry is doing, because sometimes we complain, oh, I have events, nobody's coming. I have this, nobody, you know, nobody's buying. There's a reason why. Because there is a science to everything. This is a science. Marketing is a science. And we, um, you know, covered, like I said, three presentations on sniper marketing because you have to be laser focused and not just random, not just throwing stuff out hoping that something sticks. We want to be strategic. That's why our name is Strategic Secrets. We bring you strategy that seems to be secret, but they're really not, right? But they're secret because they're too obvious for people. So Strategic Secrets is all about bringing you tactics and strategies in any area of life. Could be business, finances, relationships, spirituality, health, and so forth. And to help you now to apply this in your particular context, right? Everybody has some different situation, but nonetheless, these principles apply across the board. All right. So for those who may be on new tonight, again, my name is Chance, U.S. Navy veteran, number one best-selling author and implementation strategist. I'm also the founder of Strategic Secrets University at Monetize the Skills Academy, uh, where we teach individuals, in particular, professionals, entrepreneurs, and ministry leaders how they can take their education, expertise, and experiences and be able to package them into products, programs, and services to deliver particularly online. In this aspect now, you are able, 
if you fit those categories, you are able now to make a lasting impact, fund your dream, sustain your mission, mess, mission message, or cause. And we want you um, to have a bigger vision as well, like what we talk about significance, where you are making also an eternal impact. And that's what it's all about. So if that resonates with you, you are in a wonderful place. If you've just gotten this link, join the family, right? Go to strategic.com and learn more. Um, you can take some of our courses. We have uh, courses there. Uh, we have books and different products. We have a blog. You can check those out and just up level your life. And that's how we contribute to your life and to your practice, your ministry, your business, whatever have you. So I want to talk to you about, in particular, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Black Panther, right, which came out last year. The reason for this is because when this was brewing, I made a blog post on my website and I made a bold declaration that within one month, Black Panther, that marketing strategy that they use, will actually take this movie to over one billion dollars. Now, again, forget we're not talking about the movie itself. I'm talking to you about marketing. All right. So sometimes we have to get rid of these limiting mindsets. You know, oh, you're talking about movie. The point is movies use marketing strategies. If you're a ministry, you need marketing. Dumb profit, you need marketing. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Schools market, everybody's marketing. And so you should learn from the best, right? Because they are actually doing an awesome job. You don't take a movie to be a billion dollars, okay? That is doing more than some regular businesses doing. That's a movie, a movie. Come on now, right? Doing a billion dollars, that is crazy. So they had to know some things and they had to execute on some serious strategies in order to be able to pull that out. And if you and I can see some of what went into this, you can begin to now maybe apply it in a similar way into your particular context, okay? So the blog post that we did in particular was called the 10 Unorthodox Black Panther Marketing Secrets Exposed. They were unorthodox because they were bold, they were audacious, but yet simple and unused. You know, sometimes it's like um, secrets that are hiding in plain sight, right? This is the kind of strategies that I noticed that they were doing. So I hope that you, you are checking along with me. So make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end. I need you. If you have a notebook, if you are, um, you know, probably even if, you, if you're on your phone or mobile device and you want to do screenshots, feel free to do that so you can take uh, pictures of the slides as well. So let's delve into it now, right? So these 10 strategies I have found to be crucial in helping myself, um, in helping clients that we work with, as, as especially people are trying to become coaches and consultants and, and go into online spaces, um, I find that if these just 10 principles were practiced consistently, um, I think you can probably do much better. Okay, So here is a quote from um, the New York Times when the Black Panther was out. It says, this film is annihilating all the newcomers. In other words, it was doing better than the Iron Man, which, which pretty much started out the whole thing. Um, it was doing better than even the Avengers and all of this stuff. So, and it says now, if, the, if, if, if it kept up that trend, then it would be the newest newcomer in movie doms, $1 billion club. And so that's why I had made the tweet during that time that Within a month, I believe that indeed Black Panther would be in the $1 billion club. And we know that it entered the $1 billion club, okay? Not only that, but within a short period of time, it had already, I mean, demolished all kind of records, right? Blockbuster records, it had done over $700 billion in a, I mean, $700 million, sorry, in a very short period of time. It just, in, like I said, it, it took a month, pretty much, right? For them to do over a billion dollars, right? So, you know, it was just two to three weeks and they were already um, half a billion dollars. It's crazy. It was an amazing lesson in strategic marketing. And I believe that even this strategy or this particular training ought to be in business school, right? So maybe in the future, we might, we might find some textbook actually um, shared with us this particular breakdown of what happened and how Black Panther and the marketing strategy behind it is actually helpful in business marketing. So I wouldn't doubt it. I know for sure we're going to actually put it here is, as one of our upcoming uh, courses to actually teach us marketing. So right now, 
we've gone through, like I said, three presentations on sniper marketing. So soon and very soon, what we're actually going to do is we're going to turn all of that content, right, four particular uh, modules at least minimum, and we will actually teach you sniper marketing, including now um, how movies actually are promoted so you can have those strategies as well. So stay tuned for that course that will be coming to a university near you. Okay, so let's get into it now. So number one, number one of the 10 unorthodox Black Panther marketing secrets that I, that I want to expose is simply this, repurpose content. What do I mean by that? Now, in other words, Marvel Cinematic Universe, which now it pretty much Disney has actually bought them. So that's another strategic move right there, right? So if you would notice that they are not created necessarily new movies or new products in the sense of they are taking all the comics of yesteryear and now turning them into movies. Because, I mean, who have not grown up or seen or heard about, you know, Iron Man, you haven't heard about um, the Hulk, you haven't heard about Spider-Man. All of these are comics, right, from way back when. So in other words, all they're doing now is taking sections of these comics or other stars and, and, and villains from the comic series and turn them into movies and turn them into shows because we have TV shows, right? The Runaways, we have... Um, um, Black Lightning, they have all these other shows as well, you know, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, so many different cartoon, and I mean, not just cartoons, but the comics, they are actually turning them into products. So in other words, they're taking what they have, and they are creating multiple products with them. Now they are making more money. Do you understand what I'm telling you here now? So repurposing content is simply taking what you already have. You don't always got to go create something new, right? Case in point, what do I mean by that? Let's make some application. If you have written anything in before, you don't have to come up with an entirely new book. You can actually take those content and now repurpose them into different things. For example, on my website, like I said, this book right here, matter of fact, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful book, but actually what I did was, because I, I was upgrading my website, you now we have a whole brand new site, right? So please make sure you bookmark strategicsecrets.com. But before I up upgraded that, I looked at all of the top blog posts that I had, all the ones that people liked or comment on uh, that were shared the most and so forth. And I took those and I actually took out the best ones and that's what I created this book. Those were content that I had already written, right? And then not only that, but I helped walk people through some of this, which is similar now. I take, I take videos and little explanations, short videos. And um, like Laquisha is probably on here, you can testify. Um, we put that into 40 days uh, Great Dish Challenge, which is at the end of this book, people can now go in depth and get a 40 day experience going through the stuff. That is what I'm talking about. Uh, my book on prayer, this was part of, again, some of my studies, my dissertation. I took chapters out of that, and I was able to create a book because, I mean, that, that was a lot of work. So imagine, so that was actually, there was an assignment that I had done, 27 pages, I think. And then I said, well, let me now develop that. So I didn't even have to start from scratch. So now that, from the assignment, we now created a book. And now that is also an online course. You see, we repurpose it. That's, a, that's an example of what I'm trying to get you to see. So what you can do is take what you already know. That's why we talk about, again, leveraging your education, expertise, and experiences. What is it that you're already good at? What knowledge do you already have, including many of you are on here are professionals. If you have academic degrees, Again, turn your dissertation into something. I took my my master's degree project, which you know for that I did it a master's in project management, but my research project for that was actually where we got monetize your skills book from, right? Because that's what I really wanted to do. And then how did I turn into an online course? Well, I actually when when I did the work. I, I sold the, vid, uh, the videos and interviews. I said, hey, you know what? Might as well see if anybody want these. So I sold them and people bought them. So then I'm like, okay, well, I might as well develop it. And now I even coach people 
on Monetize Your Skills Academy, right? So that's what I'm trying to tell you about now is where we are now leveraging our content to create other things. And when we get to, I think, point number seven or eight, you see how this comes back into place. So again, if you need more blog posts, for example, your website, you can create, uh, repurpose your content. Um, if you have a podcast, you can take the audio out of the podcast and you can transcribe it and now you have written text. Right. If you have videos, you can do the same thing. You can take the audio out of the video. Now you have podcasts or audio file, and then you can even put that up online. That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. You are leveraging your stuff. So this is to me. Therefore, what I notice here then is that Marvel and now Disney, they have a paycheck for the foreseeable future, because how many comics do they actually have out there? So they are just gonna go. So now, in other words, it was good that they, in a sense, developed all this stuff in the past. So now people are on the superhero frenzy. So now they are just going through picking out the best ones or whatever strategy they use for that. They are just picking out their stuff and they are just creating more and more movies out of them. And then again, like we said, some of them are movies and some of them are um, sh um, shows. TV shows, and I've even seen them like the, the, they have the Hulk and they had, uh, I think, the Thor. They have live shows where you can actually go to a live viewing where they act these things out as well. So amazing, amazing. Let's go to number two. So number one, again, is repurpose content. Number two is craft your own narrative. What do we mean by that? If you notice now, Black Panther was making a statement, all right? Um, the, the director, Ryan Coogler, did not allow the regular Marvel directors to craft their narrative because this at that time in the U.S., at least, you know, there, there were a lot of things going on in the African-American community. So what he did was he incorporated the present theme and feel. And so this goes with point number three that's coming up. And he was able to write the narrative. In other words, he was able to tell the story his way rather than allowing the narrative to be written by someone else. What do I mean by that? That's why, again, we say sniper marketing is all about being laser focused and having your niche and your voice. This is your signature. In other words, you must have your signature on whatever you do. When people read your books, your voice must be the one that's coming through. That's why even when I do editing, I tell the editor, I don't care how professional your stuff is, make sure you maintain my voice, right? Because when people read my books, generally it's as if you are listening to me. So it sounds pretty much the same. So I know my second book, when I was, um, when the editor was editing it, she was like, this sounds so strong. I said, that's exactly how I sound when I'm getting this kind of message across. So don't even, Think about changing it. All you're doing is editing for uh, grammar, readability, and flow. That's it. But do not change my voice because that's my signature. Your signature could be, your again, your, your expertise, your professionalism, whatever you have, it must be in the DNA of your product, your program, or services. When I consume your product, if it's something that is health, I must say this is so-and-so. When you do whatever you do, it must have your name on there. It must have your particular, as it were, John Hancock. So what you need to understand, therefore, is in your marketing, does it rightly represent you and what you stand for? What do you stand for? Because this is what happens is that we think when we market it, we must attract everybody. No, good marketing does two things. It attracts and it repels. Your marketing must repel the people you don't want. So that's why you have to take the bold stand. Because when you take a bold stand, the people who resonate with your message and mission and cause will follow you. And those who can't, they will be repelled. If you notice again, this happens greatly again in, in the US, right? So I'm not gonna call names, but I know we see it all the time, even in politics. Let's put it that way, right? This stuff is signature. This stuff is attraction and repel, right? So you must be able to create and craft your own narrative, your own message that is ideal, that is focused, and that calls out the people who you want to follow you. 
And so, so many people stuff is watered down. That's why, again, when I look at marketing, particularly from churches and nonprofit organization, it's so vague and general because they're trying to just get everybody and that's why they get no one. Your message must be strong and says, hey, we are for this. This is what we stand for. Our product gives you this result and you gotta be bold about it. Like my, for me, I know that there are many people who can do all sorts of stuff and do what we do. There are people who can help you with your book, help you with your course. But there's one thing I know for sure, that if I help you with your book, your book is going to be done, period, right? Period. If you follow the direction I give you, you're going to have a book, right? Some people stand, so and another part of our stand is we don't just write books for book's sake. We do books for leveraging them for business and ministry. So in other words, you can do whatever you want with your book. But our stand is this in this regards. We don't try to sell thousands upon thousands of copies of books. We use the book as business to bring us business that makes more money with the other things. That's our stand when it comes to this stuff. So that's why I tell people we're not a publishing company per se. What we do is we produce resources, yes, to help people. But what we do is more than simply trying to get you to sell this small product. So no, notice how our, our stuff flows. Every one of our books generally flows into something else. That's really the business side of things. See, that's where the most money is really made when it comes to books because most people do not sell. You have to sell a whole lot of these small items. That's a strategy. We teach that when you do book marketing. Some people will do that, but most of our clients do not do that. What we do is we set it up as a business system, a funnel, and that funnel is what creates the income. A lot of it, more than if you would do the regular book. Although we have one superstar, I mean, he he's killing it by doing the single stuff, but that works for him, but it takes more work indeed, right? He has to do a lot of speaking engagement. But you see that model works because he uses speaking engagements, and at those engagements, there's normally a lot of people, so a lot of people can buy those books. But I bet you this, if you would take the same approach at those speaking engagements now and sell high high price ticket items, he would more than outsell what he does in the books. So that's what we're talking about, what's our signature. So many other people have to publish in, right? But we're not into it like that. What we're doing is we're talking about book to business. We talk about creating courses from it. We talk about becoming coaches and speakers and consultants, charging premium pro prices. That's what we stand for. That's me crafting my own narrative and not allowing somebody else to craft it for me. Number three, Here's something that the Black Panther in the marketing, what they did was disrupt the status quo. You cannot be the same, which builds upon the previous, but you cannot be the same as everybody else. You must shake things up. So Black Panther shook up things, right? Most of, for example, it made it made a political statement. It made, it made a racial statement. It made all kinds of statements in this particular movie, right? Because more, beyond that, of course, we know, um, even in the comics, they're not a whole lot of black superheroes, there are black folks in there, but even here, they say, we're going to even put this movie now even ahead of the Avengers, the Hulk, Spider-Man, all those other ones. They disrupted the status quo. They even disrupted their own internal status quo so that this one can be super unique. This is amazing. So why is, why is it that many organizations do not grow? because they want to maintain the status quo. This is one of the most frustrating things also dealing with nonprofit. People think because you're in the nonprofit world, you're not supposed to make a profit. Or if you're in the nonprofit world, you are just all about social. No, nonprofit is a business. It's just a designation. It's a des nonprofit status is a designation of a type of business, right? But you are making profits. If you don't get donations, you can't continue doing what you're doing, right? So often we go to um, places, houses of worship, um, faith-based communities, and, and again, regular charities, and they are just getting along to get along. You go there, they're about nothing. They're not moving, they're not pushing the envelope, they're not trying to, to, to make statements. What they're doing is just trying to keep everybody happy and don't rock the boat. Your thing must disrupt the industry. This is what we see happening even in technology. They disrupt communication. The education system is being disrupted right now. The cryptocurrency, for example, disrupted the whole financial industry, right? Uber disrupted the whole taxi industry, right? You see what we're talking about here, right? Airbnb disrupted the entire hotel and lodging industry. This is the kind of stuff. And power, P-O-W-U-R, is now disrupting the whole energy industry. So this is what you have to think about. How can your product, like the Black Panther, disrupt an entire industry? 
right? So, for example, now, again, when we look at the Black Panther movie, it was, again, another movie that also had a primarily uh, Black African-American or African cast, as it were, in the lead roles, right? That is not a norm that you generally see. But again, because it was different, people need something different. You see this even played out in politics, right? Right here in the U.S. Call it, you know, we're not talking about your side and all of that. I'm trying to teach you principles, okay? And if you would kind of get up out of our feelings sometime, we will begin to learn more. But what I noticed about the previous election is that folks here in this country were tired of politics. So they put someone in there who disrupted the entire political scheme. Right. So politi a total business person had no political inklings. And now, now this is what the people it was, it was a disruption because people get tired of the same old, same old. Is your product different? Right. Is your book different? Is your course different? Is your whatever it is that you're selling? Right. Um, if you are providing a, a charitable services, what's different? There's so many charities that I can choose from. What will make your charity stand out? What do you stand for? Again, again, it goes back to the previous. But you must be willing to go against the grain in this world here today. You can't just pretty much swim with the sharks. You got to go against you got to go against you got to swim. Not even with the shark. You got to create probably your own tank, as it were. Right. Create your own water create your own fish pond. Because if you confine yourself into people's status quo or environment, what's going to happen is you're going to be just average like everyone else. So you have to think of disrupting the status quo. That's what this movie and that's what Marvel does uniquely. Number four, do a pre-launch. All right, do a pre-launch. This is what we're talking about, pre-launch. Again, before the movie comes out, you would notice that they're pretty much doing what? They're seeding it, right? In other words, they're doing previews, right? The whole little viewing here, little viewing over there, they're building up the momentum. So pre-launch for you could be, again, where we do pre-sale before your book comes out. You want to pre-sell it. You want to see the market response to it. They do a lot of trailers, right? You see trailer number one gets dropped, sometime even a year in advance. Then you put out trailer number two, or they give you a sneak peek, uh, a sneak peek, maybe at a, at a at a, 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 a popular game, maybe the NFL might be showing, and then you see a sneak preview. They call that a, a sneak peek, right, of what's happening. And and you, it's not a full trailer, but they just give you a hint that this is coming. So they keep building up, building up, building up, and then all of a sudden you see, phew, right. But before they give you the big uh, showdown, we want to do pre-launch. Don't test your ideas. If it's, if it's um, you know, if many of us, uh, we suffer from, um, you know, perfection, you know, perfectionist attitudes. You want to test it. Put it out there. Get the feel for it. You know, do version 1.0. Isn't that what most people do? Think about it. You, you started with Iron Man 1. People loved it. They wouldn't have, you know, maybe that's why they kept continuing. But then Iron Man 2. And some might argue that one part one was better than part two, but then they had Iron Man three. And so we see the adventures, different parts and different sequels, right? So you have to continue doing this stuff and build upon that one. If this one doesn't work, then we tweak it. Because when you hold on to your product or your idea or your program, people can't give you feedback because they have not tasted it. In our minds, we think this is what the client or customer wants. If we've done our sniper marketing correctly, you know, we can get an idea, but it's still, you have to put it in the hands of the people to mess with it, tinker with it, break it, and so forth, and then get feedback from them, you know, and they will tell you. Um, just this past week, actually, I think even yesterday, I think someone bought uh, my book, Monetize Your Skills, and they sent me a message, and it was a negative message, because I have a, a you know, automation built in. So when they buy the book or they download the book, it gives you one day, you know, have you seen the book? Here's the download. The number two and the number three, it sends you that. So, so he had his follow-up message and, you know, it was pretty much asking, have you, you know, have you read the book and so forth? Do you like it? Uh, you know, pretty much maybe asking for a review or something. So he sent me a message saying, you know, yeah, I didn't get a chance to read the book because there's a whole lot of promotions and so forth throughout the book. And so, you know, well, he probably is a new follower too. He probably just recently found it because I've never seen him on my email list before. And it's a it's a very it's a big person. Very I don't know, let me see if he if if he's on on here. <laughs> but either way, this is for education. So sorry if you're on here 
uh, you know, hey, this is for education. We want to, you know, we want to make our, our full community aware of how we think and process. So, so you're not offended. So you also, I, you, you didn't offend me, by the way. It was good feedback. So that's what I'm saying. But here's the thing. If I take your stuff and was just, you know, ah, then I probably would not have learned from it. But you know what? In my mind, I've been saying I need to up, up, upgrade that book, by the way, and come up with a second version, right? And I didn't, I haven't put a date on there when I'm gonna do that. But your email for it reiterated that. You, know, you see what I'm saying? So I took it as a, hey, I'm, I'm on the right track here. That's like a confirmation, okay? But I want you to know, again, that's why I'm saying we take a stand. We don't do books just like how most people do. Our book is about business. So you read my book, yeah, it's good, but I don't just want you to read the book. I'm trying to get you to do the other things I'm talking about. Get into my course, get into my coaching program, because that's where that's where we can continue to teach you more. Because most people who read the book, by the way, and read any book, they don't take action. So throughout the book, I give you opportunities to implement by going deeper. That's how the book will become more meaningful. So you want to know that. And based on your profession, you ought to understand that because, you know, I'm sure you hopefully you're doing, you know, marketing and in particular sniper marketing. If you haven't seen that video, please go back and watch three videos that we did on that. But you really need to understand that a book for us is about business. A book is not for just um, information sake or, you know, for fun. We're doing it as a business system and helping you because this is part of learning. You see, most people go to school, they just get all this stuff and they don't really implement. My books help people to take action, to go deeper, to learn with all the different learning modalities. So you're reading it, but I want you to see it. That's why I want you to take the online course. I want you to hear it. That's why I want you to take the online course. Then I want you to get coaching so you can get hands-on, kinesthetic. That's part of the learning process, okay? So let's go. Uh, so again, do a pre-launch, right? Do a beta test is another way of saying that, right? Beta test, whatever it is, even physical products. Do a beta test. Ask people what they think. You know, if you're doing braids, do some for free and get the word out there. Whatever you do, but let people know that you have something going on and pre-launch, pre-launch, pre-launch. Now, when you do a pre-launch, you'll find something interesting. You want to get early adapters. What do we mean by that? These are people who help to sustain, who help to build and sustain the momentum and to validate the saleability or the practicality or the loveliness of what you are offering, program, product, or service, right? Think of early adopters as the people who line up for three days, okay, waiting for the new Apple phone or the Apple product to be released. Those are early adapters because they now build that momentum for all those sales that they need, right? You see why pre-launching is good. So pre-launching helps you call out those early people who it doesn't matter what your product is like. There's some people, I'm like that. I'm an early adopted something, but late adapter, you know, in others. But, um, you know, for example, I we all have our own celebrities, as it were, or people we follow. There's some people out there, and even authors, it doesn't matter what book they produce, I'm just going to get it. I don't even care what the subject is because I love that person and I know what they do. So in other words, they know if they have a thousand people like that, then they can guarantee a certain amount of sales. So early adopters are the people who love Marvel Cinematic Universe so much that even if any of their movies are flop, you're going to find these people are going to go support it anyways. So it might not top a billion dollars. But their next movie, for sure, is going to do several hundred millions. Why? Because they have a broad enough group of core people who are on their website, play their video games, subscribe to their magazine, you know, read all the comics and do all of these different things. That's their tribe. That's their following. Those are the, those are the core people. So when we say early adopters also, you can think of it as your core team. Right. If you are doing uh, in your business, you have your core set of people. Right. They said 20 percent of the people do 80 percent of the work. 20 percent of the people contribute 80 percent of the results. Right. That's called the 80 20 principle. All right. Uh, the Pareto principle. So who are those 20 percenters who will um, support your launch, support that product, support that idea that you can rely upon them for sale. And if they don't buy, then you know your stuff really probably needs some work, needs to go back in the shop, or we need to squash it. Because these are your most loyal customers, your most loyal subscribers. There's some folks on here. I know that if I ask you, please, will you do this? They will go ahead and do it. You say, you know what, Chance, I don't even really like that man, but because it's you, I'm going to get your stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Right? And so, 
you need those kind of folks. But if they really say, hey, you know what? I don't think this one is good. You're going to listen to them. Why? Because those are the people who can now help you to get to the next level. So find early adapters when you're thinking of launching a, a program, when you're thinking of, again, how does this apply even to charity, to, to nonprofit work? Okay. Your donor base. There are some people who, who give you donations no matter what. So let's say you want to launch a new um, campaign or program in your, you know, or launch a new service for your nonprofit. You know what I mean? Uh, let's say you're feeding the homeless and we want to, um, you know, start a shelter or we want to be able to go on a mission trip, for example. Who are the people that you can rely upon that you know that with their support, pretty much you're going to raise most of the monies already without even tapping into your larger donor base, okay, or trying to persuade your donors. This happens to the board as well when you have board meetings, right? In a board, we have something called quorum, right? These You can't conduct business without the quorum. But even to get certain ideas passed, you know that there are one or two people on that board that needs to be convinced because if they're not convinced, probably nobody else will. When they vote no, people are to just vote no because they probably carry that kind of swing. Now, that can be, you know, into the political area too. So you got to be careful with that. But at the same time, it's just a general principle. That's how we work as human beings, right? So you have to know and understand this thing. That's why I say it's a science. So when Marvel is coming out, and I'm going to show you a video um, soon with Steve Harvey, right, that he did um, on, on this Black Panther thing. So when Marvel is bringing out this stuff, for example, they know that there's a pocket of the community, you know, that will always support this stuff. And they can rely upon their help to get the news out, to promote, and to get enough sales that makes it look good now. Because everybody's waiting to see if it's good before they buy it, right? That's why most people, you have, you know, now the lines at the Apple stores are generally long when they launch the new product. But you have some, the other people who sit down and wait and say, well, I'm going to see how the iPhone really is based on these people's feedback, right? So they don't want to be, as it were, the guinea pig. So that's fine. You have to have the same approach in your business. Okay, so now we halfway. Let's breeze to the next one. Number six now is optimize for circular virality. That's a fancy phrase. I'm going to break it down. What do we mean by that? It's just pretty much making your stuff go viral. But I like this word because my good friend, Brenda Bashan, who actually got me really serious and committed in online marketing, okay? By the way, that's someone to follow. I will throw that out there because, um, you know, it, in my early days of starting online business, I got serious by being a, an affiliate of Brendan, and that's how I made my first $1,000 online. I used to dabble all the time, eh? you know, in the military with online stuff. I just liked the concept and idea, but I was never serious about it. But when I was following Brendan and I learned more about online marketing and affiliate marketing, I signed up for one of his products and bam, I made a sale. And I'm like, whoa, he gave me a thousand dollars. I'm like, whoa, this thing really, really works. And that's how I'm here today working this stuff. So he come, he came up with this phrase, circular virality. It means, therefore, that when stuff go viral, you can make that thing continuously go viral because he has also found a science to making things go viral. Now, this is where most people in today's world do not understand social media. They don't understand how the digital world functions. For your stuff to go viral, you need to engage your stuff on social media. Insta you got to find influencers. This is what um, you see happening at the movies. Notice something. When a movie comes out, they're talking about it on CNN. They're talking about it on all the popular news station, all the popular shows, right? You're going to be on Oprah. You're going to be on all of this other Ellen show. You're going to be on everybody's show. Why? Because they're promoting their movies, all the movie re review places, all of the um, newspaper, Vanity Fair, and all of these different places, uh, you know, uh, Rotten Tomatoes and everywhere they're going. The who's who of, you know, journalism. They're going to be, you know, of journalists, they're going to be hitting those doors. Why? Because they know that one mention from this particular person creates an avalanche. And now that your stuff can go viral. When, for example, the trailer gets released, you know, Marvel just released the trailer. And then probably within a few hours, it's several millions of views. How did that happen? 
Marvel didn't go and share it 15 million times. No, what they did was they released it. Their early adopters shared it on their social media. And now all of these fans are now everybody sharing it. And that's how the views get increased. And that's awareness now. Because the more people that sees your stuff is the better. So an example, we talk about, for example, using social media. Think about Facebook, right? If I have, um, let's say, a 1,000 people that follow me on Facebook, that's my tribe. Okay? Now, when I drop something, they all let's just say only 10% is going to see it. Now, that's only 100 people. But let's just say I have another friend who has 10,000 people. Now, I can just expose my things to 11,000 people. And let's just say now 10% of that. Now, 1,100 people sees it instead of my only 100 or 10%. So, we're giving a fraction as, a, as, as an example. Now, let's say now those 100, okay, you see those um, 1,100 people has a following also now of 10,000 people. Voila, we're looking at over a million people now that we can connect with. And even if 10% of those see the stuff or take action on it, that's 110,000 people or 100 and some thousand people that are now taking action to share my stuff. Let's say now they share it at 100,000 100, people see it and just... We wouldn't even, let's say 10% of that would be what? 10,000, half of that, okay, 5,000. And let's say I had a, a product that cost $1,000, 5,000 times 1,000. That's what I'm telling you. Circular virality. Utilize influencers. Influencers are people who have large followings on Facebook, on Instagram, on, on YouTube, on anywhere. Reach out to them. Ask them, hey, can you promote my stuff? Become friends with them and let them help your stuff to go viral. Eric Thomas, who is the top motivational speaker in the world today, People did not know Eric Thomas because even though he was doing this stuff, he was a motivational speaker for decades. And guess what? He still was not out there. But it took one person to share his video called um, When You Want to Succeed as, as Bad as You Want to Breathe. When someone, individual, shared that, that thing went viral and that brought Eric Thomas to the forefront of the world. Now, today, he's a millionaire. Why is he a millionaire? Because circular virality. Other people help to get his message out there. And the more his message got out there is the more followers he can get. The more followers you can get are the more customers, clients you can get, and even donors. That's how it works. In today's world, if you are not on social media, if you're not utilizing the new tools, all right, there are new tools, not necessarily an entire replacement of, but they are the new tools of taking your stuff to the next level. And that's why churches, nonprofits are struggling, especially in this particular area, because they are slow to adapt to this kind of stuff. All right. Meanwhile, businesses are dominating the space. All right. Let's look at the, the last three. Next is launch on a meaningful or significant date. Why is this crucial? You will notice that when the Black Panther movie came out, they could have launched it in June, right? Summer is a big Black Monster month, right? Too, right? Summer time. They could have launched it over the Christmas holidays. But they choose to launch it in February. Why? Because February is Black History Month. And February is also big for us in America. Why? African Americans. Who are the main cast and leaders in the, in, in the movie? African Americans, people of African descent. So it made sense to launch on this meaningful, significant date. That's the kind of stuff that we are talking about. Now, this has a two-edged sword here for you. So in other words, um, let's say now, if you know your birthday, you normally throw a big bash. That might be a good time because if you have friends and family and so forth that supports you on your birthday, you might want to launch on that particular day a particular product, program, or service, right? Some um, nonprofits, for example, they have their 40th anniversary or 20th anniversary. That might be a good time to launch some new program or ask for a major contribution for your organization. Um, when I first moved here, the organization I work with, when I first moved to Texas, uh, you know, there were people there who could have given, okay? But they, they didn't give. But what we instituted was at the end of the year, at the end of the year, Christmas time, 
we would do a review of all that we did for the entire year and then ask people to make donations okay now the first time we did that here's what happened we raised forty five thousand dollars how was that possible there was one individual who gave twenty four thousand of that forty five they could have given all throughout the year but no what happened at the end of the year people are in a given spirit but not only that we now reviewed here are all the positive things that we did in this particular year. Now, imagine if we were able to get this amount of funding, how much more could we do in the new year? Wow. So you, in other words, and then also are looking for what? A tax deduction. So when people are looking for tax deduction, when do they do it? Generally, you have it before December the 31st. They have to make that final donation. So in other words, the end of the year for nonprofits, I see some nonprofits just crossing over the line. So what you want to do is what? You want to do a big fundraising campaign in December. That's a meeting for a significant date. Because why? People are looking for tax deduction. They're generally in a happy mood because it's Christmas time. And then also New Year's. So they're looking forward to blessings and prosperity. So now you capitalize on that. That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. But there's also a, a, a downside on this. What we do, we are careful to study also who's launching what on what date you don't want to compete with certain brands and certain people who are launching on a significant day for example let's say a uh, health dr axe is launching a book on tuesday of next week and my book was scheduled to launch on tuesday and it's a health book in the same category that he's trying to vie for i am not probably going to beat our dr axe on that particular category so therefore i can kiss my dream of being a number one bestseller in that category so i'm not going to launch my book on the same day either that's the example of what i'm talking about so not only that but even when you're looking at affiliate marketing joint ventures your partners might be launching on significant dates when i was doing my project um for monetize your skills there's some people that i interviewed uh, you know, I scheduled for interview and they could not give me an interview because they were in the middle of launching their product. So that's an example of what we say. So it's not that they couldn't support my thing is that they had their own thing going on. So knowing other people's schedules help you to avoid some certain periods and then but you want to launch again, whatever it is on a meaningful, significant date. What I'm just saying is, though, again, you have to also consider the flip side. OK. There are certain days, if you notice, that key movies comes out on a certain days. Certain books are launched on Tuesdays of uh, of the week. So you have to look at the, all of those, um, you know, equation, and then you can, you know, work around, navigate that. Um, we see that happen here, right here in the Valley, uh, where I live is South Texas. They have so many different holidays because it's close to uh, Mexico as well. There's a lot of Hispanics here. So you have the regular American holidays and you have Hispanic holidays. So we have seen where you're trying to do something in your community. And here you are, you're promoting big time. You get your flyers out, you get your, because that's what they mainly do. Uh, not a whole lot of um, digital marketing, but that's a whole other thing. But let's just say, so they send out a whole lot of promotion, nobody comes. And we say, oh, the stuff didn't work. No, it's not that the thing didn't work. You launched and you had your screening or your program or whatever it may be, your series on a date when is a holiday in this area. Everybody's with their family, everybody's traveling, nobody's trying to come out to your thing. Right? Here too, when it rains, even just this big, everywhere gets flooded. So if you have a particular program that's coming up and it's a rainy, it's raining in our area you don't want to launch that thing because guess what most people probably wouldn't come out right if it, if it rains for 20 minutes folks are staying inside so that's an example of knowing when to launch and how to launch all right two more accessorize Woo! this one is big what do we mean by accessorize accessorize is similar to what we talk about repurposing Accel accessorize mean when you see um the, the the black panther what's what 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 else do you see with it you see the dvd you have the blu-ray okay you have the the the, the figures the toys the t-shirts right everybody was was wearing african garbs so in other words you create different complementary products that you can sell with your thing so that's why when you have a book you take the book you have a physical book like this one is you have a soft cover hard cover that's two different products for the same thing then you have a e uh, you have a digital version ebook 
that can be on different platforms as well. Then you have the audio book. Then you can turn it into an online course. Then you can turn it into a coaching program, consulting program on there. You see how many products we just created based off of one thing. That's the, that's what I mean by accessorize. Then we have monetizer skills, t-shirts. So we're gonna have strategic secrets university shirts. Here I'm wearing a, a t-shirt. We normally try to represent different entities uh, when we come on our shows as well. So that's what we're talking about. So think about it, mugs and pens and all these other things, not just for marketing and promotion because some people give them away and that's good, but you can sell them as well. So I'm saying, even if you're a nonprofit, people support you, they donate to your stuff, every give them a free t-shirt, right? Put the cause that they're donating, uh, you know, to, and they, or even have them purchase it. So that's what we're talking about. So again, when you go to um, uh, Marvel.com, you will notice all of these different things. Every movie they have. So we have the comics, you have the figures, the figurines, you have the video games, you have all of these different products that are complementary to whatever the main product or program or idea is. That's accessorizing. Okay, so. Think of what other products can you add in addition to what you're doing because now you just increase the value. So in other words, people can buy your book as a bundle because we talk about books because again, many people in our community want to write books. But again, if you have a book, you could just, let's say a regular book is about $10, $15. So that's all you have. But if you put it, um, the audio version to it, now the audio version is about $15 to $20. And then if it, were, if it were in DVD form, now you can command $20 to $50. And if you have an online course, now you can command $100 to $500 or $1,000. You see what I'm saying? So the more accessories you can put on to any product that you have, the more you will be able to. You see, By the way, we see this everywhere, right? You go to McDonald's, you, you go in there to get, you know, I'm talking about, you know, fast food. Forgive me. I know we have a lot of health conscious folks here, but it's the principle. Remember, we always learn the principle. You go in there, you're trying to get the regular fries and they upsell you to some other thing. And you come out there spending $10 instead of $2 on the fries. So that's what you want to think about when you do your thing. Doctors offices do it too, right? You go in there, a chiropractor, I go in there to just get a little pop. Then you come out there with massage stuff and all this other stuff that you didn't need. Same thing when you go to the mechanic. You went in there just to fix your tires and then he said, your radiator needs um, thing, your, your this, your that, your that, and all of this stuff. And then you went in there spending $30, that's what you thought, and then you came out spending a couple hundred dollars. Why? They are accessorizing. You have to do it as well. Number nine, we're almost there. Globalize, globalize, globalize. Listen, Black Panther did not become a $1 billion franchise by simply focusing on the U.S. or the West or the Western world. They made that all over the world. Today with technology, you can go global. When I told you again, when I did my pre-launch or test, beta test uh, with Monetize Your Skills Academy, um, I tested at all different prices, but when I was offering just the, the videos, I mean, the interviews of, you know, the research I did, the first person who bought it was from New Zealand, New Zealand. I said, what is this? And then not only that, but when I published my books too, uh, most of the people who were buying early on were people from Europe, uh, the UK in particular. And I'm like, what? I don't even know people like that. And guess what? They're finding your stuff. Right? When I get royalties from Amazon, I see, you know, what is it, British pound, I see euros. Uh, uh, sometimes you have some stuff from even India and from Japan. You know, I don't see a lot of those, but I see if I've seen a few payments from Japan and Canada. So this is what we're talking about. You live in a global world. Live in a global world so you can reach, you're not, no longer confined to your particular area, but you have to have, you have to master where you are, but nonetheless is globalized, globalized, globalized. So not only that, but if you notice some movies today too, they are, when they come out, they have the, the you know, the, the U.S. version of it, but then they tweak it sometimes for a different part. Like I think China had a different version of Black Panther than we did. And uh, certain other movies, they come up because you never know. They might have certain political themes or something like that that may not resonate well. So you kind of, you know, morph it just a little bit for them. OK, so that's what globalization is all about. We are now in the global market. So you think about this. We work with people from all over the place. I have people from different parts of the world that work on projects with me. Um, right now, I have um, someone from Europe who is going to be. Um, working on a, on a book project with me, you know, so that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about is you have to think outside the box and you cannot confine your earnings or your support based solely on where you are. So Black Panther, again, they made a big chunk, 
in the U.S. That helped to build the, the main momentum. But then again, they went overseas and all different parts of the world. That all contributed to the one billion. The one billion was not made solely from the U.S. alone. Otherwise, you probably still would be trying to hit the one billion dollar mark. But I want you to know that when I see movies coming out today from Marvel, they normally have that global appeal as well. So you got to think of that. And finally, make it a Wakanda affair, meaning that make it so exciting that people want to participate and to be involved with this stuff, right? What do we mean? You notice everybody was doing Wakanda. People, after this movie and even before this movie uh, dropped, people were trying to buy a ticket to Wakanda and not return. Why? Because And it's a fictitious thing. But people were so into it. In other words, they had a good tagline. They had something that people can grab onto, that people can celebrate. So your product must be something that becomes catchy, that becomes, uh, you know, like, like a movement that people want to be a part of. And you see it happening all around the world in different aspects as well, even in social good, right? The, the, the Red Cross, I mean, you, Red Cross is everywhere. Why is that? Because again, when people see that Red Cross, just the symbol alone, they already understand it. Coca-Cola, right? I mean, you see that symbol, you already know it. Nike, again, is all over the world because again, the brand, the way they develop this stuff. So this is pro part of branding. So they did not have to, push this on anyone. It just became something. And now Wakanda itself is something that everybody is resonating with and understand. You don't have to go try to even explain it. In other words, your brand, when we say Nike, no one needs to explain that. We know we're talking about shoes and clothing and athletes. You think about these people already. Right? When you say Apple, you think of a certain quality. When we say Microsoft, you think of another quality. But your stuff must have that type of appeal where people can get behind it and it becomes a movement. If you can create a movement, you can create a sustainable income, a sustainable following. And that way, you will be able to make that impact that you want to make. So I hope that helped you. I hope it resonated with you. Again, if you want to go back and check it out, um, you can look at chapter, was it was a 32 in this book. Right? Get a copy of this book, Strategic Secrets. Okay, get it at our website, strategicsecrets.com. Now, that's pretty much it for tonight's training. I hope that resonated with you. So we have learned tonight now how to market like Marvel how to use these marketing principles for movies and so forth and celebrities to get your stuff out there to the world, 10 different strategies. So I want you now to think about whatever you're gonna create next can be a blockbuster. Can it be a blockbuster? And if we can help you, please reach out to us because sometimes I know um, people need help. So as we have stated before, in our last training when I did a live Facebook demonstration, if you want us to help you or you want to schedule a free consultation, 30-minute uh, consultation, you can click right now on that link or go to um, strategicsecrets.com slash contact. And my information is there. You can reach out at chancesstrategicsecrets.com or monetize the skills, either one. And we will be able to help you to fine-tune your marketing, you know, if you wanted to, we can do it for you as well. But this session is simply for us to help you to get clear on who you are reaching, get clear on your messaging, get clear on, you know, what, what, your, what your thing is. What is your funnel? What, what are you using to, to actually build something? And again, it doesn't matter if it's business, nonprofit, even an idea, it all can be able to, uh, to be applied using this strategy here. So um, my boy is... is is acting up now, so I gotta go. Alrighty, so I hope this helped you. Remember, we are on here every single Thursday. I want you to put it on your calendar and join us. And if you have questions, if there's something that you would like me to cover or an expert you would like us to bring on to teach you something that is relevant for you, please, please make sure that you reach out to us. And again, I wanna encourage those who have not taken a course from us, right? Strategicsecrets.com, we have a university. SSU, Strategic Secrets University, offers courses that are relevant, right? Relevant expertise. It's more than education. We call it training because education sounds most theoretical. We are dealing with practical, relevant, meaning that are current, 
you know, best practices for this time so you can apply them in your business or in your nonprofit or in your ministry. We do them for all three because we believe that these strategies are cross. They don't, it doesn't matter. You just have to plug in uh, your particular thing on them. Alrighty, so that's it. Have a wonderful evening and may God richly bless each and every one of you. I'll see you on next week. Bye-bye.